All right, I'll take it. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day. Are you happy Amen. to be in the house of the Lord yes. this morning? Amen. Oh, we yes. are in our Father's house. Amen. That's right. Amen. It, it, not the, not the final Lord. one. You know, we're not that in, in the temporary one. The temporary <laughs> one. Would you stand to your feet, please? I'm going to sing song 143 in the hymn book, but I want to encourage you to go shake someone's hand and say hello, good morning, nice to see you, nice shoes, I don't know, something. Just say something. Okay. All right. This song is called Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is my What a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His good. And lost in his love. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my story. This is my My Savior, all the day long. They'd be singing, scratching the ceiling at that one. A little bit better. No turning back. That's where we're going. This song is called In My Father's House. I want to see some hand clapping. Yes. Listen, moving. Amen. Okay. If I can be up here and do it, you can too. That's right. Okay. Yeah, do, it. do it. But I'm just happy to be in the Father's house this morning. Amen. And this song is called In My Father's House. There you go. Thank you. Come and go with me to my Father's house. To my father's house, to my father's house, come and go with me to my father's house. There is joy, joy, joy. Peace and happiness. Peace and happiness there. house in my father's house saints 
today. Amen. And those tuning in as well. God bless you. Well, at this time I have our deacons come forward for our morning tithes and offerings, if you could please. Amen. Thank you. Oops. Make sure I give this to him. Here you go. Let me offer me this. All right. Check one, okay. We'll get this on the on the little square box out there uh, for all you, some of you uh, churches that ride the middle of the road and think everything's all right today. 
In Amos, uh, the fifth chapter, the 24th verse, surely help me out. Let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Amen? People jumped on about 15 years ago. Can't judge, don't judge, don't judge. And the Word of God is full of the righteous judgment of the living God. Amen. I don't know how you're going to tell between right and wrong if you don't make a judgment. Amen. Amen. Let judgment run down as waters. That's God's Word. And righteousness is a mighty stream. So you churches that are playing church, that's for you. I promise you. That's free too because that's from the Word of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we hope and pray for your, for your very presence to set upon Solid Rock Assembly this morning, O oh Lord. Quicken our souls, our spirits, our minds, and our beings to your precious words of eternal life and light. We need you in everything we do. Help us get it right today, Lord Jesus Christ, and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please bring your tithes and offerings to the front. Let all those that seek Thee rejoice and be glad in Thee. Let such as love Thy salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified, be magnified, be magnified. Say continually, the Lord be magnified, be magnified, be magnified. Say continually, the Lord be magnified. Father God, thank you so much for the day that we have, Lord. Thank you for this assembly that we have, Lord, to come to praise with you, Lord. And Lord, we love you, Lord. And please, Lord, bless us all, Lord, and bless this church, God, and bless this money, Lord. And thank you so much for everything you do, Lord. And bless all these crooked churches, Lord, that they think they're doing right when mm -hmm. they're just teaching wrong, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord, just come soon for your bride, Lord, yes. before this world gets any more corrupt. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank the gentleman. Thanks his name. You get that from the day. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, at this time, we want to honor fathers here today. Those 18 and up, if you don't mind. And uh, just a little token of our love and appreciation here at Solid Rock Church. Um, Dr. Billy Graham said... A good father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. Amen. Amen. So true. Amen. So we've got your ladies here, and I appreciate ladies helping me put this together for you all. And we're looking for any of the guys over 18. I've got helpers. If you're over 18, please raise your hand. Because the women, we won't tell you. <laughs> but the men, right. So they're going to bring you just something, a little something. Since all the grocery stores are going away from plastic bags, we thought a bag would help you if you're shopping. So as they get that together, they're going to send it around. And it'll take a moment there. It's all good. Thank you. So we appreciate our dads. Also, those uh, ones that have gone on before us. Amen. They're pouring them out, folks. <laughs> I'll pray for Miss Anna. She's not well this morning. Keep her in your prayers as well. And I appreciate our helpers here. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. See them, point them out, and find them. All right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, go all the way to the back. Amen. God is good. A lot of dads, we appreciate them. I was blessed with a, a wonderful father as well. Um, he was a farm boy. He served in Korea. He worked with, as a water department um, 
red water meters all day. So he had to climb down in these big tanks with water and stuff. And I used to think, wow, that's cool. But when I got older, I realized how dangerous that was. <laughs> but he did that, and he took care of us. And I'm thankful for that to have a father like that. And a dear husband like that as well that takes care of me and our children and everything and all of us. Amen. I appreciate Dr. Cash. He cooks such a great meal. So. He does. <laughs> The Mother's Day bags were white. Why are these black? I don't know. Guys just prefer the darker colors. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we were blessed by the, uh, local entrepreneurs in this area to help us with this. And I uh, hope it's something you enjoy. Just a small thing. So we find all the guys. And do we miss anybody? 18 and older, basically. If you're a little younger, that's okay. <laughs> all right. Now, I'm looking for in the house this morning. Uh, help me out great-grandfather with the most kids and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Do you know who that may be? <laughs> great-grandfather with most children. Sounds good. Stop, stop that. All right. There he is. Amen. Brother Rob, amen. All right, grandfather with the most kids and grandchildren. Granddaddy. Yeah, we got 13. <laughs> five and 13. Yeah. All right, we got to have two. We can have two. I get to be Father Abraham. Father Abraham. I like that. <laughs> All right. All right, now we got the dad, the father with the most kids in the house today. Most kids. Five kids? Four kids? Up oh, in the back, I got, I know, that's the pattern, we got six, we got three, we got three is good, this is, that, okay, four, I think we got that can, that's good, we got four is good, got some in the back, need one of them to help, got how many, two, two, all right, we'll look for the most grandkids, we'll say five and up, two is good, five and up, okay, now we're looking for, in the house, the youngest dad with the youngest child. That's a good one. 18 and 1, 19 and 2. <laughs> On up. We're going to have to count good high up. Maybe Jordan. 36 and 2. All right, there's one here. Amen. We'll go with that. Amen. The dad with the youngest child. Got to have at least one in here. Two. There's one right here. I know this, this little, little girl, little April. I'm glad to have her you know, with us today. She's two. Yep, she's two. She's, I'm two. <laughs> and we have dads. Amen. All right. Well, I think that's all I can find in the house on my list here. Well, this is awesome, guys, and we appreciate you so much. And uh, so look at a person that's a guy near you, and you think you know he's a dad. Say, Happy Father's Day to you. Those who take care of other children, uncles and things like that, are also blessed. The expectant dad. Yeah, we got some expected dad. We surely do. Yes, we do. Right there in the back. I know. Because I see his wife just smiling. <laughs> we got one right here in the back, Miss Candy. And uh, amen. All right. Okay. Mr. Russell back there. She's so kind to take that all to you. Thank you so much. Well, we got a wonderful fathers here today. and We appreciate you and all that you do for us and our families. We've got Russell in the back when you get a chance. You got it? Okay. okay. This is good. I'm way up here. I can't hear, see her here. That much one? Back here in the back. We'll have 10. I only had 10 of those. So. He said he's got two. <laughs> you have one. I got Westwood Rose. Russell is our youngest. Our dad with the youngest child. <laughs> and if I have not enough, we will bring you another set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk into this one. They have felt good this one. We appreciate them. All right. <laughs> okay. We got them all. All right. Well, not to go any further with that, but God is so good. And I appreciate our Heavenly Father as well. All that he's done for us. Amen. He came here. He died for us. He rose again. Amen. And he lives. And I praise the Lord for that. All right. I think we got everybody. All right. Um. If not, catch us, ladies, at the end. <laughs> okay? Um, at this time, we have our scripture reading. Could Brother Josh come on up? 
and bless us with the scripture this morning. Amen. All right. Good morning, folks. Thank you for being here today. We're going to be in Psalms 127. Please stand. I want to start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for having us all here today. Thank you for clearing the path before us. Thank you for giving us the ability to have an identity within you. Giving us all the strength that we need helping us overcome everything that we stumble in, teaching us in every way that is righteous and good. Thank you for having the spirit with us here today. Thank you for giving us the word. Thank you for giving us a heart and ears and mind of yours to hear and know these things. In Jesus' precious name, thank you. Amen. Amen. Psalms 127, laboring and prospering with the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are an heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with the enemies at the gates. That's it. Thank you all. You may see. I'm not sure if you're next, thank you or not, but (laughs) Miss Candace is uh, still getting that guitar tuned up. (laughs) I think it's the weather. (laughs) Also, in our bulletin this morning, if you get a chance, get that. Have them in the back as well. Like I said, we appreciate those visiting with us today as well. And um, I'm trying to think on here. Oh, the 26th anniversary of our dear friends here. I'm trying to miss everybody this month. It's Jim and Ann Gregg. Amen. So give them a hand this morning. Amen. Amen. Larry and Suzanne, uh, Suzanne Bethay's birth, uh, anniversary is on the 13th. And uh, Dawn Anderson's birthday is today. And she's traveling to keep her in your prayers. Carly you Green. Um, our beloved uh, Lee Wilson's birthday is on the 21st. Linda Woody's on the 26th. I'm going to tell on her. <laughs> Amen. Ryan Fanulovich is on the 28th. Anita Clark is on the 30th. So happy birthday to you and all those in June. Amen. <laughs> yes, it is. And Katie Duff heard hers on the 12th. And Ann on the 9th. Amen. <laughs> Lots here, amen. All right, can you turn to you? God shows himself to us in all kinds of ways, I think. Now, we, of course, have what's called the Godhead, as it said, where the three in one, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. And we will worship God as all of these. But we will all relate to him and one of these ways a little more than the others, I believe. You don't have to agree, but that's always been my experience anyway. Of, of course, he is all three. And I know I'm not the only one that feels like We can believe this in faith, but try to write that down and articulate that we're not capable. We're not capable, and that's all right. But, uh, however, the way God has always spoken to me most is as my heavenly father. Whether you have a good relationship with your own earthly father or not, you can know what a good dad is like by knowing the Lord. And that wasn't particularly difficult for me to take on faith because my own father, though not perfect, he'll tell you that, has been a shining example to me and my siblings of what a what loving father looks like. I'm not going to sing Butterfly Kisses, okay? <laughs> it's going to get about that bad, but it's not that. Um, and I'm not just trying to butter you up, not just because I mean this, Daddy, I do. Um, we, we never had much, but we never went without. I'm grown, married, a child of my own, and he's still my dad. 
you know, both, both of them, when I've needed something or just wanted something, they're like, well, let me, let me see what I can do to, to meet that. Um, we, we have jokes and stories and memories that we share that are special to us that others don't understand. Um, and I never felt like I couldn't do anything. Um, and, and I knew I'd have him in my corner to root me on and open whatever doors he had access to and happily. And I feel... I feel he is this way because of his relationship with God. And seeing that made me want to do what he does and be like him. Now the Heavenly Father is that for all of us and more. And he wants to be that for all of us. You may not like yourself, but he loves you. He's going to open every door to get you where you need to go. And he's constantly rooting you on. He says you are loved when you don't feel lovable. He gives strength when you're weak. He holds you when you can't handle it. And if you are his, you belong no matter what. And so, you know, if you have a good relationship with, with your earthly father, that's something amazing to celebrate today. But whether you do or not, you have a heavenly father to celebrate always. And he's always with you. And I'm going to ask my daddy to come sing a song with me. He don't know nothing about this. But it's one you know. And I'm sorry that the text is small. Okay? But you know this song. Sing it as, as you can. Okay. okay. I can't read it. <laughs> it has never been out of his care by Dallas Hope. I still can't read it. <laughs> That's okay. Well, you sing the choruses with me, okay? Okay. I can do, I can do maybe the first one. Okay, that's fine. The eyes of God are upon me. He sees everything I do. The arms of God are around me they keep me safe and secure and he knows where I am every hour of every day he knows each thought I think he knows each word that I might say and although there have been times I've been out of His will, I've never been out of His care. This changing world alarms me. has a special he's going to sing this morning too. Y'all put your hands together, please. That was a blessing, wasn't it? That was, that was a blessing. I'm going to uh, do a couple things this morning before I, at least one, something else before I sing a song. Uh, and I'm going to read a few scriptures to introduce a little 
Let me say it like this. I'm going to read a few scriptures, and then I'm, then I'm going to read a poem I put together. And then we'll try to sing a song, okay? And I'll try to do this all without a jacket on, so if you hear my teeth chattering, you know that I'm about to freeze up here. <clears throat> I don't know how you northerners do it. But I'm from South Carolina, and y'all have the air conditioner way too low. But that's all right. I'll get my wife on out and get my jacket if I need it. <clears throat> I'll be reading from the 20th chapter of Matthew. Uh, and uh, we're going to read a few scriptures because this, uh, this, this poem is about uh, labor that I, I, I wrote about. And a lot more than that, but, uh, or put it together. But anyway, let's hear the scripture. I, I, this is where I, the poem came from in my, this, the seed of the poem in my mind. For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? And they say unto him, Because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when you, if you read it for yourself, you'll find out that every man was paid the same wage. The ones who worked, whether they worked a little while or worked all day. And, the, and this uh, verse of scripture, it's about you getting the same measure from the Lord. That's what it's about. Everybody's treated equal before Christ and, and, and the laborer will get the same amount. So I decided to put a little something together because of it, because I was stared, st stared, stared, stared from South Carolina. I can't speak. Uh, and so I put this thing together about, about labor. But I put it a little, little something else. I put it like Jesus was doing the invitation, okay? And that's the name of the poem, Invitation. So it won't take but just a few minutes. The search is on and it won't take long, for idleness has ruled the day. While fields need attending and hearts are for the mending, great work for mortal clay. I saw he worked one hour, and his brother worked for three. Two sisters shamed the men, for they worked on bended knee. Their cousins, aunts, and uncles worked through the noonday sun. But oh, what song of victory recruited by God's Son. As the day wore on, you'd think it long, but time birthed joy on winsome wings. And made this harvesting such delight. Oh, what grace our eyes have seen. When is labor so reviving? And how it lifts your humble soul. The wonder in this field of life, the half has never been told. The willing he prepared, be they bruised or broken or even torn. The Lord makes, us, makes use of all who come, be they blood-bought and reborn. Our laboring hands are not fatigued, but overshadowing scars sometimes appear. I've noticed them once or twice in the brightest light, then I realize my Savior is near. So off we go to another row, renewed with added might. Gray skies can't hamper work like this as we harvest in God's light. Evening, then morning, describes the first day recorded in God's Word. What a marvel... What a marvel of time our Creator has fashioned for as the, sun is, as the sun is setting and flesh has come to rest, the Spirit on this brand new day is ascending to the land of the eternal blessed. I've been walking that same old road for miles and miles 
If you're hearing that same old voice tell the same old lie If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better lie There's a better lie If you've got pain He's a pain taker If you feel He's a way Somebody testify If you believe it you believe it If you receive it you receive it If you can feel it Somebody testify If you believe it If you receive it If you can feel it Somebody testify testify Genesis chapter 50 for just a moment as Jordan comes to read and I would ask if everyone would please stand what he's going to read is the premise for the continuation this morning of the story of Joseph Genesis 50, starting on verse 15. It said, When Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus shall you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and for their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please, forgive the trespass of the servants of God, of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am I in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. 
I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Amen. Amen. All right. May be seated. That was literally the end game with Joseph finally in the end when he had welcomed his brethren. Well, we're going to rehash just a little bit this morning and pick up the story in Genesis 45 and show you one more time how Joseph is a type of Christ, a forerunner, if you will. As a 17-year-old teenager, Joseph had visions that God gave him, and don't be jealous of other people when God gives them a vision for their life, because he has one for you too, if you will listen. He was hated by his own brothers for the visions that God gave him. His brothers plotted to kill him over their jealousy. The oldest brother saved his life by suggesting that they fake his death. And upon doing so, they sold him to slave traders and went and told their father that Joseph had been killed. Their dad never got over it, and he grieved for many years. Joseph was soon sold to a captain of the Egyptian guard by the name of Potiphar. Potiphar was so impressed by Joseph's integrity that he put him in charge of his entire household. But all the same time, Potiphar's wife tried to sleep with Joseph, and he outright refused many times. So finally, she tore her clothes and declared that Joseph had attacked her. And he was immediately thrown in prison for something he did not do. While he was in prison, the warden himself was so impressed with Joseph's integrity that he put Joseph in charge of the whole prison. Here was a prisoner running the prison. While he was there, it was discovered that he could interpret dreams by the power of God. While Joseph was still in prison, Pharaoh dreamed two dreams that greatly troubled him. And no one could interpret the dreams. If you notice, he called for the magicians and the soothsayers and the astrologers like everybody else did. And they could not interpret the dreams because these dreams were from God and only God's people can interpret one of those. Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams were truthful, and he gave godly wisdom to Pharaoh on how he could literally save the known world from starvation. And so Pharaoh put Joseph in command of the known world, second only to Pharaoh himself, and Joseph's guide, guidance saved everyone from the great famine that was to come. And now we pick up the story. When Joseph's brothers show up in Egypt wanting to buy food to keep from starving, they did not recognize Joseph, but he did recognize them. So he now starts putting these men to task and to see what they would say and how they would react, to see if they had integrity. And he asked them many questions about their father as if he didn't know anything about it and found out he had a, this, this young, the younger brother. They answered not knowing what was going on. And so on their final trip, he put money and his own silver cup in their sacks and then had them stopped when they were leaving and brought back before him as if they had stolen this. And here when they were brought before Joseph, they thought that they would be either killed or enslaved for their theft. They were terrified when they had to stand before Joseph. After all, they had no idea who he was 
and what he was capable of doing to them. And in Genesis 45, it was really getting to Joseph. He'd been talking to them over and over, and sometimes he had to run out the room to go cry. And so finally, at this last confrontation with them, it says Joseph could not refrain himself before all of them that stood by him. And so he cried out loud, cause every man to go out for me. Get out of the room, everybody but his brothers. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. Oh, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall and watch that. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it, and no doubt they were wondering, why is the great Joseph, uh, who we named Zephnapaneo, the savior of the world, why is he crying in front of these Hebrews that came to buy corn from him? And Joseph said to his brethren, I am Joseph. Does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. That's an understatement. All this time, they thought they would never see this man again, whom they had sold into slavery and faked his death and because they had hated him. And now they've come back to buy corn in Egypt to keep from starving. And now they find that the brother that they hated is in charge. All Joseph could think about was his father. What a befitting story on Father's Day. His father, who he loved so much and no doubt missed so badly. And that was the first thing he asked about. All those many years, he yet longed to see his father. Can you imagine, though, the brothers, when they heard him say, I am Joseph? No, no doubt they couldn't answer him. Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, I pray you. And they, they came near, and he said again to them, I am Joseph, your brother who you sold into Egypt. Now therefore, listen to this, tell me this isn't the godliest thing you've ever heard. Therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Somebody gets the big picture. He says, for these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there will neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. As I said, Joseph got the big picture. And that is the problem that so many Christians today have, is we don't get the big picture, and we just fall to pieces when every little thing comes along, and we don't know how to deal with it. And, and we, we act as if God is not in charge, and that God is not paying attention to what's going on, and we scramble to figure out how to work this out right and how to do this. The bad thing about what most of us do quite often is we look at our circumstances and do not understand God's big picture and so we react wrongly. He told them again, he said, so now it was not you that sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh the Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. That was the big picture. God was planning that all along. People, please understand that the circumstances in your life are no surprise to God whatsoever. He'll never look down at you and go, oh, I didn't see that coming. He knows everything that's coming. We don't, but he does, and we've got to trust him. As scary as it may be at times. Because he has a plan for all of that. And understand that everything that happens in a Christian's life is all about God and his work 
which is redemption with none other than through Jesus Christ. That's why we are here. We are his ambassadors to spread the gospel, and he will bring events along in our life to steer us in the right direction. But we've got to step back and say, God, I don't understand it, but show me the big picture. And he will, eventually. So Joseph tells his brethren, hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus saith your son Joseph, God has made me Lord over all of Egypt. Come down to me and tarry not. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near unto me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And there I will nourish you for yet there are five years of famine lets you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. God was going to make sure that the tribes of Israel, the sons of Jacob, were going to survive no matter what the devil tried to do because it was prophesied that Jesus was going to come from that line. Oh, the devil tried everything throughout the centuries when it was prophesied that Jesus would come as a descendant of Abraham. And he tried everything. And here was another one trying to starve them out. But God sends people ahead to fix things and get things ready. When God has a will, it's going to get done. Make no mistake about it. God will have his way one way or another. It's up to us whether we want to be part of that or not. And so he told him, hurry and go to my father. Again, Joseph's main concern is the welfare of his father and his family. Did you notice the one thing or the several different things that were not evident with Joseph? Obviously, he was not Irish. He was Hebrew. No revenge. That was, and he had them right in the palm of his hand. Let me tell you something, folks. There will be a time when you may have your very enemies in the palm of your hand, and your integrity will show what you're going to do with them. Your godliness and your righteousness will show then when you have that opportunity. There was no revenge. There was no spite. There was no anger or railing out. And he had a reason to do all of that because of what they did to him, but he refused to do it. He said this, just go get my father and all of your family and children and your livestock Get everything you got, and I will take care of you, and you will dwell in the land of Goshen. Wow. And he told them, behold, because they, they were still floored. They still couldn't speak. He said, behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it's my mouth that's speaking to you. And you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, of all that you have seen, and you'll hurry and bring down my father here. And then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them, and after that his brethren talked with him. They finally got some words together that they could say they were so stunned they were terrified. They were shocked. They could not believe how God worked in this man's life. And people will be shocked at what God does with your life if you'll let him do it. It appears, as I said, that his brothers were so shaken that it took a long time before they could even talk to him. They must, and the thing that floored them no doubt, was Joseph's mercy, grace, and forgiveness. That is a type of Christ. There is no one sitting in this room today, including the man behind this pulpit, that deserves one single thing from God but judgment. 
That is all we really deserve is the judgment of God. And I am still floored at, Je at Jesus' mercy and his grace and forgiveness. That's where the word amazing grace came from because it is amazing. It was amazing when I got saved. It's been amazing all my life. And this morning I find his grace amazing again. Verse 16, it says, the fame went there, the, and the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house. He found out what was going on, saying, Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. And now Pharaoh is going to step up to the plate. And he said to Joseph, say unto your brethren, do this. Laid up your beast or load up your animals and go and get back into the land of Canaan and take your father and your households and come unto me and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt and you shall eat the fat of the land. He loved Joseph so much for what Joseph had done for him. Now he is going to do the same for Joseph's family. And he told Joseph, you are commanded, this do ye. Take you the wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives and bring your father and come. What a wonderful invitation. And then he told them this, and this is a timely message. Regard not your stuff or your things. I like the old English. They refer to it as your stuff. We do that too. I got all this stuff. He said, don't worry about your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. How about that? You don't have to worry about bringing anything. Pharaoh gave Joseph all of the riches and honor and glory of Egypt to share with his father and his brethren and his descendants, and he told them not to bring their old stuff, just come and enjoy the good of the land of Egypt. You know, heaven will be like that. Jim was talking this morning about, he said, I'm, not, I'm in no hurry to get in the ground, but I'm looking forward to the day when I get a new body. Anybody lay in the bed last night and sit there thinking I sure would like a new body? <laughs> Anybody over 40, if you don't raise your hand, you're lying. Definitely, if you're over 60, you're lying. <laughs> Heaven will be like that. We don't have to bother with none of the old stuff anymore when we go up there. There won't be any sickness or pain or sorrow or disease or poverty or any kind of anything. I mean, the Lord will look at you every day and say, I'm sorry, but I don't have any bad news to report today. And I want tomorrow and I want a million years from now. We won't have to bother with our own stuff. And the children of Israel did so. And Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh. And he gave them provision for the way to take care of them while they traveled. And to, all, and to all of them he gave each man a change of clothing, but to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of clothing. And to his father he sent after this manner ten donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt and ten she-donkeys laden with corn and bread and meat for his father by the way. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said to them, See not that you fall not, that you fall not out by the way. Now here's what Pharaoh did. By order of Pharaoh, Joseph sent a huge provision. Listen carefully. This, is, this hits home. He sent a huge provision for the journey to go fetch his father so that no one would have any need on their journey to Goshen. Did you get that? This is how our Heavenly Father treats us. We are on a journey right now. Every morning 
when I look at the latest thing that's going on in this country and in this world, I think, thank God this is not our home. This is a temporary place that we're going to be for a while, and we're going to Goshen. We're going to Canaan. We're go There's a, different, a bunch of different names for heaven that people use, but most of all, we call it home. And that's where we are going. Now listen, while you are on the journey that you are taking, and everyone has a time when their journey is going to be over, if the Lord doesn't come and bring the whole church out soon, we will have everything we need while we are on our journey through this world. Any of y'all ever been surprised lately how God looked out for you in the middle of a big mess and provided for you when there was no other way possible? That's how he works. And God will do whatever he has to do to take care of you on your journey. And it may be tough and it may be rough, but he is going to provide while you're on your way through this earth. I'm not a health and wealth preacher because if I was a health and wealth preacher, I would be looked upon as the most faithless man that was headed straight for hell. God is not, and these people that, that, that tell you that God wants you to be wealthy and he wants you to be whole all the time, just send me 1995. They're after your money. They're not here to tell you the truth. It is going to be tough. And there will be mornings that you will sit up on the side of the bed and go, uh-uh, I, I, I just don't feel like doing it. Maybe you've spent a sleepless night worrying over a problem or over an ache or a pain or whatever. That's not what he's talking about. What I'm saying is he will come through for you every time and make a way for you every time to be able to make your journey until you leave here. It won't always be easy, but he will always provide. All right, it says, As they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father, and they told him, Joseph is still alive, and he is governor over all the land of Egypt, and Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. That was too good to be true. And sometimes God will bless us in such a way when you hear it, you'll go, I just can't believe that. How in the world can that be that God has done this for me or done that for me? And you'll be shocked. And then they told him all the words that Joseph had said. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. That must be my granddaughter back there howling. And Jacob or Israel, those names were interchangeable. He said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. People, I'm here to tell you today that the son is still alive. The son of God is still alive. And he wants to share with you all of the riches and glory of heaven. Just like Jacob. I know many of you find that hard to believe. But look at the wagons with your spiritual eyes that are full of the miracles and blessing that Jesus has already sent you. And I would say, having said that, rejoice and prepare to see him. Forgiveness, grace, mercy, and reconciliation is waiting for each and every one of you right here and right now. You don't have to worry about getting yourself straight before God will receive you. You let God receive you as you are now, and he'll fix the getting straight part. He will do that. You come just as you are with your baggage, with your hurts, with your doubts, with your sin, with your problems, and all the things that's setting you back. 
and let him take care of that today. He wants to share with you the same way that Joseph wanted to share with his brothers, although they did not deserve it and although we did not either. So having said that, I'm going to ask if everyone would stand. And if you have a need from the Lord today, if you need to be saved, please come and talk to one of these prayer warriors. If you need to rededicate your life, if you need to just come and say, I am going to trust you on this journey, or whatever it is on your heart, while Candy plays a song of invitation, we've got folks waiting to receive you. If you need somebody to pray with you, just come and take them by the hand. But no matter what, whatever's on your heart, just come around this altar.